first started this after summer vacation last year when I got back. I was in advanced drawing. And I started with these pieces back here. I started with this piece actually. This is my first piece from drawing class. It's just I painted it on paper, made it look like put it up, made it look like fries, made a stencil thing draw, so I sprayed this the stencil on in red spray paint. Everyone loves fries. I love fries. If I could just eat fries for the rest of my life I would. This entire section is just based on food addiction because I just came back from my dad's house in the summer and I spent pretty much every day eating fast food if I could. And like I guess at that point in time I realized how bad it was for me to be eating fast food. So I was like, hey, a lot of people live with this addiction of only wanting to eat fast food every day. I mean, they've even made a documentary on it called Super Size Me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, food addiction is the thing. And then I started getting a little bit cheeky <laughs> with it. I made this based on the fact that everyone also loves ice cream. And this is another one of the little sexual innuendo parts of the show where it's like something cute and childish looking with something very, I don't know how to say it, like sexual, sexual and provocative. And then I went on to like making this where I'm pretty much, you know, calling out people who eat fast food every day. It's like a religious thing for them. People live off this stuff every day and I'm like, yo, yo, it's bad for you. Mm -hmm. Don't worship it, though you do. So after we finished this, my drawing class, I went right over into, I went over into screen printing. I like print making, I'm a printer, I'm not gonna lie, that's my thing. Um, so I was excited to take screen printing and we first started out making stencils to burn on toast. So we st I started out thinking about, you know, what can I do with media persuasion on a piece of toast? My bright idea was toast is toasty. Bread square. Televisions are kind of square. Start with TVs. I burnt a uh, TV onto toast and then I took spray paint, made a stencil, and I sprayed fetus on that piece of toast. That was an awful piece of toast. <laughs> Sad that toast rocks. I just continued with that television series and this is where this came from. This first piece was actually just for people who sit and watch TV for hours and hours and they're not even watching but the TV's on and they're sitting there. Mm -hmm. That's why it's just like two eyes staring at a blank screen. I mean, everyone knows the no signal screen. That's what this entire thing is. Just for people who stare at television for no reason. For people who need that the comfort of having the television on all the time. Mm -hmm. Do you think that comes from the notion of loneliness? Because we're in such a disattached type of society. society. Do you think that's where the TV comes into play? Like it fills in that void? You, you know, definitely. Because, you know, I spent a lot of time alone when I was back home. I was one of those people who would have the TV on but still have my laptop sitting on me while I'm on the computer and I just have the TV on for background noise just so I can feel like I have that company with me. This was one of the more fun prints that I made last year. Uh, I got a piece of linoleum and I started carving out, I pretty much just wanted to make a liquor label, a liquor bottle label, and <laughs> cute. I feel like it's like a generic type liquor label bottle imported liquor with the ship and everything and it says uh, it's just not even a name just liquor bottle and it's like handcrafted with a secret blend of flavors designed to specifically let you forget all the bad things in your life and start having a good time it also has a warning on it because liquor bottles always have warnings mm -hmm. it says may cause bad decisions and memory loss <laughs> That is very uh, common, I feel. Especially here. I'm not even kidding. The amount of kids here who drink and the amount of bad decisions made while drinking is ridiculous. As someone who's lived here for two years already, I can tell you people don't learn from their mistakes. Um, and they just keep drinking every weekend. We live on the safest campus 
probably in the US. Yeah. I'm not even gonna lie. Mm -hmm. We can leave everything unlocked and nothing's going to happen, but we do drink a lot. The way that this display is put together is beautiful. Have, is that like is there any type of inspiration in particular that made you do that? Um, I don't know, if you like see recycling bins in the suites or around trash cans after weekends, it looks like somewhat this. like this. It does. You have like empty beer boxes, bottles everywhere, it's ridiculous. Any particular bottle in here that's your favorite or, I don't know, this one. Why? Is it because it's so old school? Um, if we go old school, I'd go with the Sailor Jerry bottle. Yep. Look at that, isn't that really cool? It's beautiful. Sailor Jerry, man, he's doing a thing. That's a pretty good bottle. <laughs> but Captain Morgan, because this is my drink of choice here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the closest thing I can get to a decent rum. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I said, like I said before, I drink a lot of alcohol, but then again, what 22-year-old doesn't? I come from the Caribbean, we drink a lot of rum there. Well, alcohol is a part of your culture. It's a part of my fine. culture. Like, it, I've grown up watching people be publicly drunk during carnivals and stuff, so it, it's nothing new for me. Yeah. I mean, I never used to drink a lot until I was old enough to. <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> this is my culture. Uh, kind of. It's our generation, we're drinkers, but then again, which young generation is in the generation of drinkers? <laughs> This also kind of tied in with the drinking. It's just a regular girl thinking she's classy because she has a bottle of wine and drinking wine is classy. I found the image in a magazine and I was like, oh my gosh, she looks like she's walking drunk down the street in her she fabulous did. little coat. Cut out her face and put a wine glass in its place. Mm -hmm. Drew a, I mean, yeah, a wine bottle and drew a wine glass in her hand decided, okay, she is now super classy, that is her. A lot of people think drinking wine is classy, but it's not that classy. These are my smoke boxes. Um, this is a series I did at the, it started at the end of last year. Um, surprisingly with you. <laughs> yeah. I came here and I met literally everyone I met smokes. I don't know why. It's it's weird. I, I, I just, it's never something I thought, you know, why would everyone do it? It's weird, dirty. So I just started wondering, asking around, why do you smoke? And then I decided, well, I'm going to make a carton of people who smoke. I have 10 boxes and one carton and it's pretty pretty much personalized to the person and their favorite cigarette their favorite brand of cigarette and then it has their story on the back on why they smoke mm -hmm. and that's pretty much the series i mean i found pretty much everyone smokes because it's calming people have issues mm -hmm. let me show you smokes because it calms them down peer pressure Peer pressure, um, likes it, um, stress, pretty much family problems, mm -hmm. socially, socially, socially. Everyone started smoking pretty much because everyone around them smoked and they were like, oh, I don't want to be left out, maybe I should do it too. Yeah. They're like two best friends. They're like best friends and they're, they're like two horrible addictions, I feel. Everyone here are pretty avid smokers. They go out after lunch to smoke, go out after dinner to smoke, have one at night before they go to bed. They, I mean, they're pretty much addicted to smoking. I told my advisor, this is how I felt since the starting of the year last year literally had so many things to do especially since I picked up new like two actually three new clubs at the beginning of the year worst mistake when you're a senior don't pick up on new clubs I started cheerleading I agree with that <laughs> just since the beginning of the year it's just I felt like 
it's just one, I always had something else I had to do. It bothered me, I was always stressed out. I always was like, oh my gosh, I have this to do today, I have this to do today. So this is just that. Everyone has something that's always on their mind that they're like, oh gosh, I have this, and it's just hanging over their head. And I, I, when it comes to like addiction, I told them, I said, you know, for people with addictions, they have to do it every day. If they, they, if they just need it, it has to be done every day. So that is like them having one more thing hanging over their head. They're like, oh, I need to get my fix today. I need to get my fix today. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm going to get my fix today, but that's pretty much just how it happens. An addiction is just something hanging over your head. And so I printed them on balloons because how cute is that, right? Mm -hmm. Having something childish and colorful remind you that you have things that are stressing you out in your daily life. It's become a routine for me, like that one piece, I made another piece based on it, like it's just of a body with a skeleton and his head's made out of gears and all it says is just a machine. It's like you're working like a machine. You don't know why you do things, but you do it because, hey, I have to. This piece, I guess, this is when people finally started realizing that I'm a deep thinker and not just a little face value type of person. Mm -hmm. I am very superficial, but I do have some deep thoughts sometimes, not gonna lie. This one came to me, I don't know, I just thought about it. I saw a bunch of circles one day. They were all perfect circles. They didn't have anything written on it. I was like, oh, that would be cool to do as a painting, but have the circles not be perfect. Mm -hmm. Just having the center circle as perfect as it can get mm -hmm. and writing humanity on the inside. Because we all have this concept that humanity is perfect, mm -hmm. but humanity is like one of the least perfect things imaginable. No one's perfect. Humanity isn't perfect, so, you know, I have it, all the imperfect circles to an almost perfect circle are concepts of humanity, yeah. kind of twisted. I like it. It's Hello, it Deep Thought Leslie. So this wall is my genius marketing idea. Um, at the beginning, oh, after, after summer when I took drawing class, one of, my, one of the kids in the drawing class with me, decided to tell me, you know, why don't you take a street art approach to your, um, to your artwork? Do some stencils, use some spray paint and stuff. You know, I like street art. I do like street art a lot, and over Christmas break, I decided, you know, I'm going to do my own take on street art. I bought a pack of 100 letter labels, I mean, only 98 of them made it out of the hun um, 100 because I'm a bad speller. 98 individually drawn stickers, mostly done from my Tumblr research <laughs> yeah. on addictions and different types of drugs. I mean, I like comic books, so a lot of stuff look like comic book work. I set it up in the student center. It was like a one-day pop-up show in the student center based on my artwork just to advertise, you know, this show's going on in a couple weeks, so hey guys, go watch it. <laughs> you guys might like it. Oh, no, this isn't a real Twitter feed. I just thought about it like, oh, what if, you know, my art show had its own Twitter account? This is Leslie Codd and you've just experienced Wasteland.